I'm JJ Zaritsky. I'm a pediatric nephrologist at Nemours, rhymes with s'mores. AI DuPont Hospital for Children, and I'm here to tell you about um, the liposorber. The history of the of the machine is actually that it, it started in Japan, where patients with FSGS, as you know, develop high lipids in their serum. This machine is actually FDA approved to reduce those lipids, and they noticed in Japan when they treated some patients, both adult and pediatrics, that a certain subset of patients with FSGS actually went into remission. They weren't actually expecting that, and they kind of took that finding and started studying it in patients who primarily had FSGS. So I've used the machine for about four to five years now and um, had remarkable success with it. And I've had some patients who were very severely affected by FSGS. This was their last option and for whatever reason it worked. I've had some other notable, you know, what we would say non-responders or failures with the treatment. But for the most part, we've developed this uh, protocol to treat patients with FSGS and had very good luck, especially post-transplant. Any patient is basically, if they failed standardized therapy and there's some other requirements, is, is, is eligible. What you see here is a patient who recovered very nicely after undergoing lipid phoresis. On the y-axis, we have a log of the urine protein creatinine ratio, and you can see initially the patient had very high urine protein creatinine ratios. The patient underwent multiple treatments, including rituxan, along with standard aphoresis. However, when the patient underwent LDL aphoresis, we saw a very nice and sustained drop in the patient's protein to creatinine ratio. This treatment as most treatments with lipid apheresis was extremely well tolerated. The machine is available in most of the major cities. Why? Because of the idea that you treat patients with familiar hyperlipidemia with the machine. So it's more of a, of a learning curve. And my probably prediction is that uh, I'll be a uh, you know, victim of my own success in the sense that as we treat patients from across the country, they come here, we send a patient back in remission, that site immediately goes, well, how can we get the liposorber? How do we start using it? And I, I feel that eventually this will be included in the regimen of post-transplant care and even pre-transplant care for patients with FSGS. When I talk to a patient, I always say, hey, you know, I come from, you know, very kind of, I'm a very optimistic person. Sometimes I'm a little too optimistic. And this idea that the liposorber is going to work, you know, we just don't know that for certain and I can't promise any individual patient that it's going to work for them. You really have to talk with your doctor and your doctor is going to help you determine if this treatment's right for you. One of the first patients was a young girl who had come to me ironically as a second opinion for the treatment of her FSGS. She actually went someplace else and got a, a kidney. Immediate recurrence was placed on plasmapheresis, came to me and we had to work on her for a while. We made some modifications of the protocol, we added some steroids, and she went into remission. And it's, what's so weird is that you, see, you end up seeing these patients like once a week, you know, you get to know them, and then all of a sudden they just disappear. So I think that the overall, the future for FSGS treatment is bright. And I think we're on this kind of curve, this uh, learning curve, where we're gonna see some novel treatments and some novel understanding of the primary disease in the next 10 years, which is, as a doctor, is very exciting. And I think for patients, it's really gives them a tremendous amount of hope.